Welcome back to the Pulse of Fitness and Bodybuilding. I'm Dave Pulsanella, and I'm your host, and I'm joined by my brother, Mike. Hello, Mike. How you doing? Good, man. Let's talk about some stuff, man. The, the most notable of which, and I never thought this would, uh, this would get to the point where I was bubbling angry, so angry about it that I had to do a podcast about it, but it's come to that point. Because something happened to me the other day that was just unforgivable and really put the icing on the cake for me as far as gym etiquette is concerned. Waning gym etiquette has been an issue for years and it's been getting worse and worse and worse. With the new generation of millennials, it's, it's gotten to a, a, an all new high. It really has. But what happened the other day was just put the icing on the cake for me um, because I was at Planet Fitness. <laughs> and um, Why were you at do, Planet Fitness? Well, because I work out there. I, I, well, I was working out there uh, until we opened up Diamond State Iron. Well, we'll get into that later. I want to talk okay. about Diamond State Iron, the new gym we, we opened okay. up. But um, yeah, Planet Fitness, um, I've been going back and forth between there and, and whatever other gym I can get a hold of, but they have everything there I need. Um, and I don't have to yell and scream anymore. I'm way past that part of my <laughs> career where I have to yell and scream to get myself. I don't need to make that much sound anymore. I'm not lifting that much weight. So there's, there's no threat of setting off the lunk alarm for you these days? I doubt it. Okay. I'm not even sure I'm big enough to set off the lunk alarm. <laughs> I wanted to do some rope pushdowns, and there was like two ropes total in that gym. There was a kid, a millennial, he was in his 20s, I guess, you know, doing pushdowns with the rope. And I literally, I went up to him and I said, can I work in with you? And he turned to me and he said, no. He literally said the word no at me. <laughs> and I just, I, at first I, just, I, I couldn't believe, did I hear what I just heard? He, you don't say, like, that's the kind of, that, that question has many, many possible answers to it. But one of them is not no. Well, let me ask you this. Aren't there times in classic old school bodybuilding gyms where the answer would have been no? Let's say you have a very advanced lifter and or bodybuilder using a lot of weight and someone walks up who's not as strong, not in the same league, not in the same category. Wouldn't there be a probably, a, hopefully a nicer no, but a no nonetheless. Yeah, but see, that falls under etiquette as well, because you will know not to go up to that particular dude at that particular time. There's no reason why this kid couldn't share those ropes with me. And if his, if his concern was, you know, social distancing and keeping his distance from me, I was going to take it and put it on a different pulley. We could use a different, like that was about six feet apart. There was a pulley over here, and there was the pulley he was working on. Okay. So I could have very easily used the pulley over here. We just take it off here, right. put it up here, and then I give it back to him. I'll even wash the balls and everything before I give it back to him. <laughs> it didn't matter. But he turned to me and he said no. So I thought maybe he didn't understand the question. So I re-asked it, and I said, I'm sorry, may I work in with you? You go, and then I go. So you, think he, you thought he didn't even know what work in means. I, th I had to define it for him. So I, I gotcha. went ahead and did that just in case there was a communication gap and what came out of his mouth wasn't really intended. He said no again. And I said, okay. So I, step, so I step back. He puts his earphones back on. He begins to do his set, but I, st I don't stop talking at his head. The entire time he's doing his set. I was like, I'm sorry. I seem to, you seem to be confused. You seem to think that this is a, a question that you can answer with a multitude of answers other than yes. But the answer is yes. You may work in however I want to do it this way or I want to do it that way. And he's just doing his set. And I'm just yelling at his head. And he's trying to ignore me. But I know he heard me. So as soon as he got done his set, I walked up. I unhooked them. I said, this is going to show him a lesson. I unhooked him. I unhooked the... the the rope and I brought it over here and I started to use it I just took it from him without giving him a choice and I said he's either gonna smash me over the head he's gonna walk away <laughs> so I'm like doing my set I'm like shit I'm watching was he big? a big kid I'm watching okay. out of the corner of my eye what he's gonna do what he's gonna do what he's gonna do and he finally just walked he just walked away and that was the end of it but my god no in what universe is the answer no in the universe where the older bodybuilders are no longer teaching 
the younger bodybuilders. There's not that sort of apprenticeship kind of thing where you start working out with someone who knows more than you and they show you how to put on plates, which is the right way to put on plates, how to how to put your things away and 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 how to let people work in and that you should let people work in. You really have to be taught that though. Because I don't remember ever being taught that. I remember seeing it and maybe just having been led by example and just, it's just common courtesy to your fellow gym member. Because the, the, the gym equipment doesn't belong to you. Even when you're using it, it still belongs to the gym. That's how I look at it. It's still the gym's equipment. It's everyone's equipment. And if you're serious about your workouts at all, you're not going to want your pace to be fucked up. You're going to want to continue the pace uh, you know, without resting too much and losing your pump and, and getting cold and all that stuff. Anyone who's, who's seriously into it will know that and understand that. And in fact, um, letting someone work in and, and trading off sets can actually keep your pace more even than when it you're doing it by yourself your and even. your mind yeah. starts to wander and you lose your sense of time or, or whatnot. That's but, just one example. And it seems to be like, it seems to be, and I hate to pinpoint the millennials, but... Let's, let's, let's talk about this gym I just opened. So Diamonds, uh, Diamond State Iron, right? It's supposed to be a, a throwback gym to the hardcore era. Um, Excellent. And, and it is. It is that. But it, it seemingly attracted, for some reason, just nothing but 20-somethings for now. For now. The entire membership is 20-somethings. So I'm seeing like, how things are today all day long in there. I'm just, it's, a, it's, it's basically a microcosm of what things are like today. Nobody over, I'd say, I haven't seen anybody over 35 in there. So I'm really seeing how the younger generation does things. Sweet, this and is where your, your Pulse Fitness Yeah, this is where my uh, office is now. Office is now. Correct. It's, it's a thing now where everybody who comes, not, not just most, but almost all of them, bring a tripod and a camera. And I, after watching this enough times, I said to myself, I said, I wonder how many of these people, if Instagram didn't exist and you couldn't film and post it and have anybody else wa and watch your workout, if you just did your workout and it floated off into space and was lost forever, like the workouts, like 99% of the workouts I've done in my life, would they still do it? Or is the whole thing predicated on the fact that they get to do that and share it with the world? And it's not like they're sharing with the world something that's that extraordinary because the, the workouts are quite ordinary. But the whole idea is, unless they're filming it, it didn't happen. It's weird, man. But that's the thing, and they all bring it. And, and my thing is this, if you're setting up a camera and looking through the camera and getting the angles right, make sure the learning is right, and you're doing that between each set, and then you do a set, and then you readjust and you look at what you just filmed between each side. There is no fucking way, fucking way in hell that your workout is going to be as good as if you put your phone in the locker and left it in there during your workout. And I go on record as saying that and I will defend that to the death. There's no way your workout is going to be as focused, as concentrated, as intense, as productive as it would be if you stopped that shit. Or maybe just record one out of every five workouts, not every set of every workout. Are you feeling me? Absolutely. Um, there's also, having been on the other side of the camera, there's also no way your video is going to be as good unless you're paying full attention to it. Both of those things, ah, shooting a video in the gym somebody to do and it working out in the gym, demand full attention. I've shot videos in the gym. By the end of it, I'm soaked in sweat. <laughs> I've, my brain is fried because I'm thinking about so many things to get it to be the best it can be, to really capture it. Yeah. Look, if you want to have your workout captured, get somebody to do it. Get a friend, or better yet, someone well, actually knows what they're doing. most of them are doing it doing. themselves. Every once in a while, they have a friend doing it. But the friend's working that, out, too. So, the, well, so they're taking no turns good. behind the camera, which to me is the same bullshit thing. It's the same. I would love thing. to see these people have to put their shit in the locker, leave it there. And between what I do between sets is I'm focusing on what I'm going to do with the next set. So I'm there. I'm in a zone and I sit there and I just stare at the floor and I envision in, in much detail what that next. I still do this. Even though I'm 57 years old, I'm way past retirement. As far as competing is concerned, I still train the same way. The focus, the intensity, uh, you know, the laser focus has got to be there. And I'm telling you, you do that, your workout improves. It's just that simple. 
So I sit there and I, I picture what it's going to look like, what it's going to feel like, how many reps I'm going to get, the target muscle, you know, making sure that I'm positioned in a way that's not going to further an injury, things like that. I got to be focused on and, and aware of that. How much weight I'm going to go up to after that, um, things like that. I'm just thinking of those things, and it, I, there's no way you can think of them when you're trying to also make a movie out of it. Absolutely no. agree. Just no. And, and I, all the members of Diamond State are going to hate me for this because they're all going to watch this. I know they are. But uh, there's another trend, too. And I guess this can harken back to the gym being a throwback gym because I guess back in the 70s, they all did work out with their shirts off. But they're all working out with their shirts off. And the gym's really hot. So they're all coated with a layer of sweat. And then they're laying on the gym equipment. <laughs> So I, I don't like that, although it, it is, that is old school. I agree with are that. Are they wiping down the machines after? They are. Absolutely. I'll give them that. They do do okay. that. But, um, Which probably you know, everyone got in the habit of doing you know, through the pandemic, wiping yeah. everything down. Oh, yeah, they really did. And hopefully, hopefully that habit continues. That habit stopped, I think that's, yeah. that was always something we should yeah. have been doing in gyms. But along the same lines as, like, um, as filming yourself, they, they, they pose between each set <laughs> – for like yeah. five or ten minutes between each set they're in the mirror posing and quite frankly nine out of ten times they, they're they don't have anything to pose they there's no muscles yet and there's a lot of first cycle guys in there people who've done their clearly mm -hmm. done their little first cycle and they have their first cycle muscles it's yeah so but don't cute. you remember how exciting that was <laughs> When you did your first cycle and you started to see little there's things. There's no to, to way I would have worked out with my shirt off back then. Right. And I looked better than them. I did. Um, Do they need to work out without their shirts? Because that inspires them when they see themselves in the mirror. To and I get that. So what I used to do when I was 19, I was getting ready for the, the Delaware County and all that. When I first really dieted down and, and won a show, which was when I was 19. In Ed Ryan's gym, which is the oldest school gym you could possibly imagine existing, I waited till my workout was over, and then I went back into the locker room. I took my shit off, and I had Joey film me. So Joey, our cousin, remember, who was if a you remember those videos yes. of me when I was shredded and everything, but my shirt didn't come off till I was back in the locker room area, not on the gym floor. I don't know. Uh, I, mean, the, I, just, I guess that's the truth the of the matter is, is that truly serious bodybuilders. They don't reveal themselves until the artwork is complete. I've shot many videos in the past with Kai Green, one of the craziest looking bodybuilders of all time. That guy would work out in a hoodie, completely covered in a hoodie for two reasons. One was the sweat. He says, I sweat so much, this absorbs it. This absorbs a lot of it and I don't have it to constantly- It also creates a lot of it, Kai. <laughs> it does too, it How does much too. less would you sweat if you didn't have all those swaddling clothes on? <laughs> That's a really good point. Right. But he also, he did not want to reveal, even to himself, really, in the gym, didn't want to be distracted by the thought of what he was in the process of creating until it was created. I understand that completely. I, sometimes I would rather picture in my head what I am trying to look like <laughs> rather than be confronted with the reality of what I actually <laughs> look like. So many times I've seen myself in the mirror... And I'm like, oh, no, I'd, I'd rather, oh, yeah. I should turn a little bit. I don't want to see this. What if I keep my shirt off? I can imagine in my head that I look like anything I want to. Yeah. So I think in creating this thing that you're trying to become, I think visualization is hugely important. And you can't really visualize something that's beyond where you are if you're constantly looking at where you are. You can't really visualize something that's beyond where you are if you're constantly looking at where you are. Does that make sense? Absolutely makes sense. Yeah. To um, serious bodybuilders, but I don't think most of these people you're talking about are truly serious bodybuilders, or at least not yet. Well, that's the thing. The numbers have increased. The numbers of competitors. Everyone wants to compete now. Everyone who walks into my office wants to do a show. I'm telling you almost exclusively to almost 100% of everyone I've gotten in that office at Diamond State has wanted to compete, which is what we thought we always wanted back in the day. We wanted, oh, I wish... It wasn't such a cult sport. I wish it was more mainstream. And now, you know, I'm not so sure that's a good thing. Because with the added numbers, of course, comes the watering down of the whole thing. So now you have a lot of people kind of dabbling in it. And still only a very select few 
who are really living the lifestyle, really making the sacrifices, really going through the pain and the suffering to get there and end up with a product on stage that really is worthy of a championship bodybuilding title. The rest are all, you know, second, third call out people. And to be honest with you, it's weird, but it doesn't seem like they mind getting ready for a show, prepping for a show where they're going to be second or third call out. It's almost like it's just the idea of doing it and being able to say they did it at this point. There doesn't seem to be a huge impetus to win. Rather, there's a huger impetus to participate. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to say I did a show. Well, where'd you play? I don't know. Second out of three. Hey, man, at least you got up there. That was brave. That was br yeah, more power to ya. <laughs> Another thing they do is they sit on a piece of equipment endlessly. This is a problem. And this, this, all, relates back, this all relates back to focus yeah. and, and sending your focus somewhere else between sets. Mm -hmm. They'll scroll through Instagram and Facebook between sets, looking at totally unrelated shit to bodybuilding, reading their tests, reading their messages, their, their, their DMs. And again, once you do that, your mind goes from your workout, your muscles, the mind-muscle connection, everything, to that fucking phone. Fucking phone. And there's no way you're going to have as good, a, uh, as good a workout. Not to mention the fact that someone's waiting for that piece of equipment, like me, who's sitting there waiting, watching you scroll. I will 100% of the time, 100% of the time, I will walk up to that person and ask them very bluntly, how many sets you got left, man? And they, they almost always get off. They just leave. I'm done. I'm done. Which means at any minute, they could be done if they wanted to, because it's not really, it doesn't really matter to them. So I never give someone who's scrolling through their phone the right of way. Let me play devil's just, advocate here for a second from, from their point of view. Yeah. Um, so what if I'm not thinking about the set? I'm going to do all the sets. I'm going to do all the sets. But for right now, I want to think about where I'm going to go to dinner with my, with my girlfriend. What's so bad about that? Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. You just, you just highlighted my point that they are not really in tune with, nor is it a priority for them to have a top-notch, high-quality workout. It's, it's almost going through the motion. I'm here going through the motions, and it doesn't really matter if I put 100% of my being, every fiber of my being into this or not. In fact, I don't want to put every fiber of my being into this because that's something I'm not willing to do or a place I'm not willing to go on a regular basis. And someone who's at the gym just casually uh, shouldn't be taking up uh, machines for very long anyway. They should just keep moving, stay out of the way of the more serious people. And yeah, exactly. Where's your sense of, where's your What I'm saying is, wait, I'm saying, stop one second. Not everyone has to be balls to the wall, serious no, bodybuilders. No, they don't. They don't. But that's make the right of here. way for that person. I think the right of way should be for that person who is that serious. Right. It would be like if I was like t t dabbling in tennis on the weekends and there were tennis pros trying to get onto the, the court that I'm using and I'm like sitting there like, I'd be like, you know what, Let's take over. I'm not doing any good. I'm just taking up space here. Like at what point don't you realize that you're just taking up space on that bench going like this to your, to your phone and taking up space? Can I mention the next gym etiquette thing that I think you're going to be getting to? Yeah. Um, and this is a big one. People talk about it all the time. And that's putting weights away. I was go that was next. I knew. I know. I read your mind. <laughs> or stripping like your, your 20 45s off the leg press when you're done. Yeah. You don't just walk away from a leg press with 20 45s on each end of it. As people do that all the time. So why is that important? Because we can't have, just like we don't have a lawless society, we can't have an etiquette-less gym. I believe that etiquette is the larval stage of a law. It's not a law, but it's something you should do to make everyone's experience in that place a little better. Step outside your fucking self for a second, you millennial, and realize that there's other people there other than you. It's the understanding that we're trying to live in a civilized society. And that means not absolute freedom, but freedom up until the point that it bangs up against someone else's freedom. Someone else's this is a freedom, big yeah. topic. This is a big topic of obviously. Well, this goes way beyond uh, I And mean, we don't want to go too far off, off track here. But one of the examples that I've always seen is, uh, do you put your shopping cart back 
where it belongs. That's a real good example. Or did he just leave it in the middle of the parking right. lot for cars to bang into or for it to bang into cars? And that's, that's just a little thing that- I usually leave them because it's someone else's job to put them away. Well then, it's someone else's job to put away the weights in the gym. I pay, I pay this gym, I pay it's those not, people no. to put these weights away. It's is common the knowledge that it's not someone else's job to put it away because there's signs everywhere. Now, if there were signs that said, please put your cart back where you found it, that there's nobody here whose job it is to do that. I would 100% of the time put the cart back. I promise you I would. There's signs everywhere, put your weights back. Unload the equipment when you're done using it. It's unwritten law, but it's there to be seen. That, they don't have that for sure. I also but. think there's a bigger reason for keeping the gym neat, putting the the uh, the weights away, or or stripping so them old off. Old men don't trip over it. <laughs> <laughs> old like men me. like us don't trip over it. No, it goes back <laughs> to to there. to focus and concentration and efficiency and and having the best workout possible. Yeah. If you're spending yeah. 20 minutes looking for the other 35 dumbbell if you have to take off somebody else's weights before you can even put yours on that slows you down that saps energy that could be better used in focus in for your yeah, workout most definitely organization is very exactly. important to everything in life and organization in the gym is i think critical to productivity in the gym and you'll find a lot of uh power lifters it seems to me more than bodybuilders who really value the organization of all their weights and equipment in yeah. the gym uh, yeah. over almost anything else. I can sit here and rant about this all day, but I'm not going to. But the, the point is, I, I'm going to try with this new gym uh, venture to kind of raise my children um, with some gym etiquette. So every time I'm on the gym floor working out, I'm teaching people what to do, what not to do, how to make this happen. The other day, somebody left, uh, I was waiting for the Smith machine and someone had um, two 45s on each end mm -hmm. and he started walking away. I said, are you done with this? He goes, yeah, yeah, I'm done, man. I said, you wanna unload this? I'm not doing- How did he react? With, with 225 on it, he goes, oh yeah, 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 sure. And he unloaded it. So you can groom people. But again, it's just, you, you want your gym experience to be not only for others around you, but for yourself to be the most productive. Correct. Why wouldn't you want to take this time that you're taking out of your summer day, like however long you work out, it was an hour, two hours, two and a half hours, to have it be something that actually, when you are walking out at that door at the end of the workout, you've done something productive for yourself that's gonna matter. That's all I have to say about this. Then until next time, this is Pulse Fitness and Bodybuilding. Signing out.